You're working hard in your business, but no one knows about it except you. What do you do? Let's talk about it. Yes, yes, y'all. I'm fresh, y'all. It's a bunch of us, but I'm the best, (laughs) y'all. Listen, I'm just paying homage to some of the braggadocio rap styles from the Bronx, the Boogie Down, growing up in the 80s. Yes, I'm an 80s kid. I said it. It's a long time ago, but I'm good in the hood with it. Hey, people, I'm Robert Kennedy III, RK3. That's me. I feel like I just talked about me a lot in less than 30 seconds, so I'll stop for a second. How are you? How are you? How are you doing? Wait, is that someone else's line? Hold on. Let me give it back. Here you go, Wendy. Thanks. All right. Listen, thanks for joining me again for another episode. If you didn't hear the last amazing episode with my friend Kevin Cruz, you missed a good one. Leaders breaking the rules. We talked about it, and I want you to hear it. Head on over to Apple Podcasts or simply go to the RK3Show.com and check out episode 11. Hey, if you want to get a special shout-out on the show, I want to invite you to become a patron of the show by going over to Patreon.com forward slash the RK3Show. That's Patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com forward slash the RK3Show, and you will get access to some special perks and your name in lights. All right. Also, if you have thoughts, feedback, questions, shoot me a line at podcast at robertkennedy3.com. Let's go. Listen, before we jump into the show, I want to share with you a resource I'm using in my business. Today's show is brought to you by PandaDoc. I use panda doc. Yes, like the animal, the black and white animal, furry, fuzzy. Yes, I use panda doc in my business to automate proposals and make them easy to whip up. Using templates and easily repeatable blocks, I can put together a proposal really quickly online and then send it to my prospect online. They can read it, share it, sign it, and even pay for it online through my online proposal. So check out PandaDoc. Get on over to PandaDoc.com, P-A-N-D-A-D-O-C.com. We've got a link in the show notes, and I know it will bless you. (laughs) One more thing. Before we get started with the show, I wanted to share with you a book. What you reading, Robert? Yeah, I love that. I love it. It's cool. Anyway, right now I'm reading a book by communication expert Carmine Gallo. It's called The Storyteller's Secret, From TED Speakers to Business Legends, Why Some Ideas Catch On and Others Don't. As always, I'm not done yet. All right, but Carmine Gallo shares how to tell stories that inspire, motivate, educate and change lives. Stories of Richard Branson, Elon Musk, Sheryl Sandberg, all of those make this book a compelling read. So check the show notes for the link and go out and get the storyteller's secret. All right. So at the top of the show, I asked you, what do you do when no one knows about you? Marketing. That's what you do. And my guest today knows all about it because he's a digital marketing expert, a New York Times bestselling author, a top 10 marketer, according to Forbes and an all around idea guy. His name is Neil Patel. Neil's got a story. Let's tell it. Neil, how's it going today? Good. Thanks for having me. Man, I really appreciate your time today. So I went over to your website. I was going through and doing a little bit of research. I guess that's the technical term, but it's really kind of stalking, right? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. I don't yeah. look at it as a bad thing. So, yeah, yeah. So listen, you have a company name that is interesting. And I, and I want you to start off by telling me a little bit about it. Your company's named I'm Kind of a Big Deal LLC. I'm sure there's a lesson of some sort. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, the name is um, 
so back in the day, I was writing a book, and the book was called I'm Kind of a Big Deal. So yeah. I created the company name to be after the book. And the whole purpose of the book was personal branding and how the person who the big deal isn't me, it's actually you, the person reading the book. And I had this whole spiel and pitch on how if you want to do well in life, it's not just about being smart or good at something, you got to build a personal brand. Because if you look, a lot of the people who are successful and well-paid, a lot of it comes down to personal branding. Yeah. Never ended up releasing that book, never even ended up finished writing it. And eventually, you know, just left that corporation and never closed it down and kept the name. Wow. So here I am thinking there's a lesson behind it. And, and the reason why I think there is a lesson is because as a speaker, as a coach, you kind of run into people all the time. And the biggest thing that happens is that a lot of us have limitations on ourselves. So now that you've got that backstory, is there anything that you think about maybe from a mindset perspective with regard to the name? No, but your explanation is much better than my real one. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe, maybe if you start using it, make sure you give credit here, man. <laughs> <laughs> I will. <laughs> All right. So listen, I, one of the things as you build a business, especially being a speaker, I'm interested in looking at all of the different plateaus that people reach. And so you're, you've been New York Times bestselling author. I mentioned the Wall Street Journal thing. And then you have been listed as a top 100 entrepreneur by President Obama and the United Nations. So what is it that you do that allows you to reach these milestones? Is there something that you, you repeat? Is there something that you do or you keep in mind? Yeah. I don't really look at it as the milestones. Uh, this stuff just naturally happens when you've been in business long enough. Uh, and not all the accolades are as great as they may seem. Yeah. You know, like o Obama's amazing, but keep in mind the way I got it was there was a company called Impact that was doing it on behalf of the White House. Mm -hmm. Right. So I was selected by a third party organization. Nonetheless, I was still ecstatic and I was happy. I didn't get to meet him though, sadly. Wow. Uh, but it was an honor. And, and I don't deserve to necessarily meet him. He has more important stuff to do, at least back then, because he was commander in chief. You know what I mean? Like, right. save the world, say hi to Neil. You should pick save the world. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. But as, so, as you do something long enough, eventually you'll be fine. Yeah. So, so when you say do something long enough, so give me a little bit more specifics in that, because a lot of us do stuff, but maybe we're doing the wrong thing. Well, it's not even necessarily doing the wrong thing. It's you got to focus on whatever your passion is. Are you growing your business? Are you doing what you love? Like if you keep just plugging away, eventually everything will work out all right. Yeah. And yeah. Like, that's great. To right thing? No one really knows, but Hey, if you keep doing things in your business or your life or whatever you're trying to get to, it's not going in the direction you want, even though you're doing the same thing over and over again. Well, that's when you need to switch and do something else. Right. Right. So I want to I want to talk to you a little bit about marketing because that's 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 your bread and butter that's your core right and so a lot of the people who listen to the show are people who are either in business they're leaders themselves already and they are looking at how to share their stories with more confidence or they're speakers that are looking to up up level themselves or move to the next phase and they're being told to speak more speak more but there's something that they're missing in, in the marketing end of things. What, what's, the th what's the thing in the marketing world, the most important thing that most people miss? The most things people miss in the marketing world is they aren't testing. So in marketing, people will just keep trying one thing and it doesn't work. And they're like, oh, marketing doesn't work. Or, you know, SEO doesn't work or paid ads don't work. Well, you got to keep trying different techniques to make it work. It's competitive. Google makes over $100 billion a year through ads. Digital right. marketing isn't cheap anymore. You got to test because you have competition. So how do you know where to start testing? I mean, you can do a lot of stuff. You can spend a lot of money running Facebook ads, Instagram ads, et cetera. How does, especially a newer person, how do they know where to start testing? Yeah, especially if you're a newer person uh, and, and you're trying to test, I would look at your competition. I have like a free tool called Uber Suggest. You can put in your competitor URL. 
It'll tell you everything that they're doing. That's a great place to start because you can end up seeing what's working for them and then just start copying them. Awesome. All right. So you mentioned your tool, Uber Suggest. Tell, can you break that down a little bit more? Tell us a little bit more about Uber Suggest. Yeah, so it, it helps with SEO, paid advertising, social media marketing, content marketing. You put in a URL, it'll tell you what your competitor's doing, where they're getting their traffic from, and then you can start copying them. Communication, motivation, leadership, and more. You're listening to the RK3 Show. I noticed that you have quite a few other tools. You've got Uber Suggest, you've got Crazy Egg, Hello Bar. Tell us a little bit about some of these tools, especially if I'm a beginning speaker or small business person. Yeah, so Crazy Egg helps you with A-B testing. You get visitors to your site. You're finding none of them are converting into leads or conversion, whether you're a business or even a speaker trying to get more speaking inquiries. What Crazy Egg does is it'll show you why people are converting and why they're not in a visual way. And then Hello Bar helps you collect more email addresses. Okay. Is that more of a, what, what is it about Hello Bar that helps you do that? Because I, I remember back in the day when people used to go to websites and something popped up, they would be annoyed and they would close it. Why is Hello Bar different? Well, the, the reason Hello Bar is different is it, it does it in a smart way. And a lot of other solutions do as well. But what I mean by smart way is, you don't just have to do pop-ups. You can do sliders. You can do content upgrades. You can target people. So only people who are from Google or only from a certain source or only from a certain country. Or you can do it where you show the pop-up only if they're uh, on exit. Like if they don't engage and they're going to leave within two seconds, it doesn't even matter. If you can capture email, great. Or if someone's there for five minutes, you don't show it to them. Like you can pick who to show it to and when to show it. So that way it doesn't ruin the experience. Okay. Okay. And you've got something else called subscribers. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So subscribers is, um, is subscribers is like a push notification software. You're on your browser, you're searching the web and you know, you whether you're on Facebook or not, you get these notifications in your browser. So you collect emails, you know, it's a good source of traffic, but why not get all those browser notification subscribers as well? And it just allows you to do that it's pretty automatic and then you can send out a blast and people see it the next time they're browsing the web. So great source for extra traffic. Excellent. So that's kind of like almost like notifications on your phone. Correct. Okay. Excellent. So you, there are a lot of things out there. I mean, you you by yourself have at least these four tools that you're sharing with us and there are a gazillion other tools on the web. If I'm starting out or if I'm trying to move my business to the next phase, where do I start? Which, which, which tool do I look at first? Uh, none. I would just see, so if you're just starting out, just use Google Analytics and you can see where you're at and what's your traffic and then go from there. If you okay. want to figure out where to start with your marketing, you know, you can use Uber Suggest and pop in a competitor domain and get data from there. But I wouldn't go out there and sign up for all these tools, even if they're free, because it's just going to be overwhelming. Okay. Yeah. So starting with Google Analytics, but again, maybe somebody that, okay, maybe they've written a few blog posts, maybe they've done some free speaking somewhere and they have a little bit of a following on maybe Twitter, Instagram, et cetera. Um, what, what does that person do? Especially if they're just kind of, you know, tr- figuring it out, feeling, feeling it out. What, what does that person do? If you're just feeling it out, what do you mean by feeling it out? Well, they're not, they're not clear on their market hasn't developed for them yet. They're, not, they're, they're still kind of figuring out who their target customer is, partly because the money hasn't begun to come just yet. If, if you're just feeling it out, you know, I would just start talking to more potential customers and go from there Those, uh, and get, do more and more research until you get that right. Uh, yeah. And I say that because you don't want to end up blowing a ton of money. You know, it's just, you got to get your data right first on who your target customer is. Do they really want to pay for your product, your service, your solution, you to speak, whatever it may be. You got to really first figure that out before you start yeah. spending money and even a ton of time. Yeah. So you do a lot of speaking yourself and you, you get invited to conferences. What do you 
tell people about what's the story about you that you tell most frequently? I, I just tell people I'm an entrepreneur trying to figure things out. <laughs> um, but yeah, my background is I was looking for a job when I was 15 and a half, couldn't find a high paying job, you know, searching for a online job. Cause like I was picking up trash at 15 and a half. Right. So I was trying to find something that was better. And, yeah. and who likes picking up trash and cleaning restrooms for a living? Nothing wrong with it. It just wasn't my first choice. So I was looking for a better paying job. Couldn't find one. But as I was browsing the web, I found that these job sites make a lot of money. So I created my own. And wow. when I created my own, it got up there. I paid some people all the money I saved from picking up trash. Boom, pop that thing up. And then I'm like, wait, why isn't anyone coming to it? Why am I not making money? And that's when I had to learn marketing and that's how I got started. I had to have wow. money to, you know, keep paying people to help me. I had to eventually learn how to do it on my own because all the people I started getting help from provided no results. Wow. So that story sounds like one statement that almost every, that every business owner should, should, should learn. If you're not making money, learn marketing. Uh, I don't know if you had to learn marketing, but because there's a lot of business owners who do well and don't know marketing. Uh-huh. As a business owner, I would say the main thing you really need to learn is your customer, their problem, their, right. the solution you can provide. Because sometimes they'll tell you what they want and they don't really want that. But you got to really figure out what their problem is and come up with a solution that they're willing to pay for. One that's easy for them to use. One that's affordable, ideally. One that gives them the results faster than the competition. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So where can we find you? Where do you hang out online mainly? Where can people get connected with you? They can get connected with me at uh, neilpatel.com. Easy. I love it. So, so let me ask you this question. I've had this argument or this debate with people uh, for the last few years with regard to a personal brand and, and having a site where it's your name versus the company name or the title of a business. What, what do you recommend, especially for people who are in the speaking space? Pick anything, you know, your name works. That's the easiest one, especially if you're in the speaking space. It's all about branding. So just use your own name. That's probably the easiest thing you can do. Excellent. Excellent. Boom. There it is. Rewind this and get your blessing. I'm telling you, check out Neil Patel online and get his stuff. You'll be glad you did. Tell him RK3 sent you. Come on, folks. We need you to make this thing go. Don't forget to tell your peeps to go over to Apple Podcasts to leave a ranking, rating, and review for the show. Also, listen on Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Pandora, and iHeartRadio. Feel free to show some love there. And hey, hey, hey become a patron of the show by going to patreon.com forward slash the rk3 show get some patron perks that's right shoot me any questions at podcast at robertkennedy3.com i'll get them on the show in an upcoming episode and don't forget hang out with me in the speak right now community on facebook on social linkedin twitter ig everywhere as robert kennedy3 let's connect let's make the world great together Guess what, everybody? Everything that happens to you in life is your stuff. Your stuff is your story, and your story deserves a stage. I'm Robert Kennedy III, and you've been listening to The RK3 Show.